Hello, and in this video, I'm going to try and give you the simple introduction that I can to Apple's core image framework that they include for image manipulation on iOS and macOS. Now, on lots of these iOS number videos, there's a ton of features in core image, more than I, more than I could ever imagine. You can, you can, um, do feature detection in images, you can resize images, tons and tons of different stuff. But what we're going to focus on today is how to use it to apply Instagram type filters to your images. What we're going to do is take a color image, allow the user to hit a button and make it into a grayscale image. But so the idea is that this will give you a, sim a simple introduction to, to the concepts and, um, you'll be able to take this, read the documentation and you use it for more advanced use cases. It's worth noting that core image has a ton of performance considerations that we need to make to it because having creating a, a custom image, running it for a load of filters takes time and process processing power and, and we're going to touch on some of that today so that our application doesn't lock up and so that we can show progress to the user but I'm going to do a follow-up video talking about even e even more performance concerns in terms of lo longer term memory usage so uh, without further ado let's dive in and get into it I've got my simulator open here showing the um kind of concept in which we're going to use it we've got a, we've got a color image here and a button that says turn grayscale if we look at my view controller we see that all I've got is um UI image view, which I put that image in it in the storyboard, which we can access by using the dot image property, which is going to be uh, important soon because obviously we need to grab the raw image out of the image view. And we've also got a UI activity indicator, which we're going to turn on and off when the um, when the core image has started or stopped doing its work, so that the user has some idea of what our level of progress is. So we're going to write the simplest possible code first, and then, and then improve it. So what we first need to do is get this image view and basically all images you use in your UI, UI are UI images and that has got the stuff on it specifically intended for displaying the user interface but to be able to be able to use it with core image filters we need to be able to use it as a C, CI image so the first thing we need to do is convert um, our our core, our UI image to a CI image apply the apply the filter and then transform it back so how are we going to do that well I'm just going to say Let CI equal the CI image, and then what, what initializer are I going to use? CI well, image has a ton of initializers for a ton of different formats, so it takes one that takes a UI image, which is what we've got now. Notice this is, this is a, a basically a failable initializer, which means it, it returns an optional image, which might, uh, we, we need to bear in mind, because when we, um, give this image to the core image filter, obviously it doesn't work on an optional image, it just works on our image, so we need to bear that in mind, but anyway, um, so I'm going to say, Initialize with an image. Where we get that image from? We're getting it from our image views image, which is optional in itself. So we need to place some exclamation mark there to make sure that executes. So if that works, we should now have a um, core image initialized. Next, we need to take that core image and apply a filter to it. Now you notice that there's two overloads, as they call them, methods with different parameters for the apply filter method. Now. Um, one just takes a filter name, which you notice there's a string, and one takes a filter name with parameters. Now, the, these are defined in the core image implementation. Um, parameters are options you can pass to the filter to change how it works. So, like for a blur filter, for example, how much it blurs. But we're just turning it grayscale, so there's, there are no options for that. So, um, we're just going to pick the general apply filter option. Now, in terms of, you see this filter name, unfortunately, it just takes a string. In terms of the names of these strings, you can get them from the core image documentation, but I, I happen to know the name of the filter we need to use. We're going to try to run the CI photo effect mono filter, but notice this, this method isn't an asynchronous method. It returns us a CI image itself. So first we um, need to store it somewhere. So I'm going to say let new equals the result of this image. Now, um, next thing I need to do is reset my image view. But we um, remember that it takes a UI image. It doesn't. It doesn't take a core image image, so um, we need to convert it back. But fortunately, the UI image has an initializer where 
it can take a core image so we're just going to set that our image views image is equal to a UI image that we get from taking the CI image um, which is our new one and as we saw th this is optional but this this initialized doesn't take an optional argument so we need to put exclamation point there so uh, um, if we run this it, sh it should work so we should get the mono version but um, that's, that's something we need we need to bear in mind so I'm going to attempt to attempt to run that and open open my simulator here if I click turn grayscale we see we do indeed get a grayscale version but I don't know if you noticed it froze for a while there because it, it was uh, uh, this is what's called a single a single threaded application which essentially means the processor the processor evaluates things linearly so it it, it does it does this then it does this then it does this now I don't know why um, core image apply filter isn't asynchronous by default uh, and just gives us back the image after it's on a different thread but it doesn't so we need to do it ourselves what we need to do basically is compartmentalize our applications so that it, one part of the processor is essentially dedicated to doing the filtering and one part is dedicated to uh, displaying displaying the UI um, uh, at a basic level we need to say that when when once this processing, processing is started we need to um, show the user some kind of loading indicator so I've got that implemented here by a, a spinner so we can say spinner start animating when it starts and then stop animating when you stop but because this 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 blocks as we call it the uh, spinner will, will freeze when when we're actually doing the conversion and we don't want that so we, we want to compartmentalize these things well how do we do that well this isn't a video about multi-threading but basically anything that we do in the UI needs needs to be done on the main on the main thread so um the, that it can be in, kind of in sync with the rest of the UI and it's all kind of done in the same place but what's the bit that takes the most effort and isn't anything to do to do with the UI well that's that's to do with starting and stopping animation that's all part of the UI and actually applying the image to the view itself is part of the UI so it's this uh, filtering the image that's, that's not part of the UI so that, that's the part we want to um, kind of separate out so once we've started the animation um, I'm going to say dispatch queue and this means dispatch you to a different place in the processor and I want to get um, a global queue so we can use it anywhere in our application and what type of queue do I want what price what priority is this well it's not quite as high priority as the main thread but the user asked for it so I'm going to say it was user initiated and then ex execute something on that thread which I'm going to do using this async code well what do we what do we want to execute? Well, we, we want to create this. We want to do the filtering. But this now is executing on off the main thread. Remember, we, we can't um, do any of our later uh, updating the image or stopping animation on off the main thread. So to get back onto the main thread, we need to say, um, sorry, I need to put this creating the core image image before that as well um, so that that's on the main thread how do we say when you've done this go back to the main thread well we're just going to say dispatch queue dot main dot async so go back to the main queue and execute something well what are the two things we want to execute once we're once that's done and we're back on the main queue well, we want to put the image back in the image view or we want to stop the want to stop the spinner from executing because we're inside a closure it's going to want us to put self anywhere we're referencing this object now that would usually be a problem because it might create a memory cycle but because this this code is just going to run and then go away it's not getting held anywhere putting self isn't a problem here so um, if I actually try to build this code it's going to 
just error in the place where I need, need me to put self. So I, uh, in this case, I can safely just apply and fix it. Okay, if I run this, we should have a, a progress bar showing. We should have, uh, um, and it, it shouldn't freeze the rest of our application while it's generating the image. So if I hit and I hit turn grayscale, we 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 got the loading, and it, 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 the loading just disappeared when once the image had been created. Now, um. I haven't actually done this before, but in this video we're going to do some performance measuring because you might think, well, we moved it off the main thread with uh, with General Goodhaven in terms of performance. What are you going to what are you going to talk about in the next video? Well, basically, um, core image by using this default apply filter method. It's a it's a nice method. It allows us to do some incredibly complex filtering really really easily, but it's it's quite inefficient because it it keeps uh, um essentially keeps a copy of, of all this image data in memory even after we've um. Even after we've uh, already done the filtering and replaced the image, so we don't we don't need all that data now. We're we're just going to start profiling the me the memory usage of this app. This is an app called Instruments that I can. Um, if I go over to my simulator, we see that it's using a pretty constant amount of memory. But as soon as I hit a uh, try try tail, the, me the memory usage skyrockets up. But the point is, and and we would we would expect that because the um, it takes a lot of memory to generate this image, but then the image doesn't go back to baseline because it's, it's keep the memory doesn't go back to baseline because it's keeping in memory all this stuff that it doesn't necessarily need to. So that's the first look at instruments and what we're going to tackle in the next video. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. A quick, simple introduction to core image and some multi threading. Keep thinking I'm going to do a separate video on multi threading because it permeates so many different aspects of iOS, but um, that was just some introduction to core image. So the basic premise of core image is, is we're going to we're going to get our image, convert it to a core image, apply the filter, and then convert it back to a UI image for display. So, anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.